Hey everyone, Victor here. We're going to work on something I think is pretty useful and pretty confusing when people start out with doing map development with Map Libra and Mapbox. That's custom fonts. So we're going to go over two different ways to do custom fonts. One that uses Mapbox and Mapbox Studio when you already have a style and you want to add a custom font to it. And then we're going to look also at Map Libra where you're not using Mapbox Studio or anything, but you want to use a whole set of custom fonts uh, instead of using whatever uh, style you'd otherwise use with Mapbox. So let's get right into it. So we'll start with Mapbox Studio. So um, I've just come here, I was working on a fantasy map series that'll be coming out soon that has to do with mapping uh, Lord of the Rings Middle Earth. So uh, I have a bunch of custom fonts that I was using from Middle Earth for this. So you first of all need to get your font. You're going to need it in like an OTF or a TTF uh, file format. So I've done that and downloaded some uh, one of the files from uh, this website here. You can find fonts all over the internet. There's tons of places. Now we'll go into Mapbox Studio and we'll make a new style here and we'll upload this font to it. So when Mapbox loads already, there's all kinds of fonts included. That's all the ones you see here. And those are selected in different ways over in the layers, which we're not going to get into how to exactly select fonts and change them and everything. We'll talk a little bit about it just for the sake of the video, but not go too deep. Now, here is the fonts section. Obviously, you see there's some of my fonts already from other projects I've worked on. So I'm going to upload a new font here. I'm going to grab one of the fonts from the folder that I showed you, copy it in, and we'll upload it. It just takes a second and then it will appear here uh, when it's done. So there it is, it's on there. We can see this preview of it. So now if I was to go to my place labels, for instance, and down here choosing, let's say we have the country label, which is visible right now, and we'll go to fonts and we'll click the override button. And in terms of the fonts, we should be able to see the one I've just selected. I believe it was called Ann Iron. There it is. And if we, uh, select it now. There it is. Boom. It's on our style. No problem at all. You can also uh, modify that using when you add a Mapbox layer directly in JavaScript. We're going to actually do that with our Map Libre example. So hang on if you need to see how to specify a font in code directly. But this Mapbox Studio one is pretty straightforward. And from here, we can just do everything normal we would do with our Mapbox map moving that, uh, putting that in our JavaScript, all that kind of good stuff. So that's that one. Now the more complicated one or one that can be a little more confusing is how do you reference the fonts from inside a map that's just code where you don't use Mapbox Studio and that's a Map Libra. So for that, we're going to hop over to a Map Libra example, maplibra.org. And we're first of all, just going to fire up a map libra map i realized i actually don't need to show you the map box one so we have a map libra example we're going to come in here and there's a quick start and we'll just uh, go to the examples grab the full code from this starter one drag our stuff in here and let's see first of all if this will load okay so we have our map obviously this is coming directly from this tile source that they give us with uh, this demo tiles thing which has all these fonts included in it or it's just a full tiling service i don't actually know for sure whether it's vector raster i think it's probably vector um, but from here we will add our own fonts instead so first of all we need to be able to specify a property in our style that's called the glyphs property okay so when it comes to sp specifying a root style here we can see here that normally where we just would enter the style in our um, code right here, we just say style, we can actually break that down and specify all kinds of things like glyphs. Glyphs is what our fonts are going to be. Normally we have a number of different sources and layers that get specified in this when we just put in a style, but if we're just putting in um, our own, if we want to put in our own fonts, we need to be able to specify where the glyphs are coming from. And normally they're coming from Mapbox uh, in a normal Mapbox map. We have here a little bit more information about glyphs, but this doesn't help a lot to actually understand how to do it ourselves. So where we're going to start with is we're going to create a blank style. So we're going to go to blank style Mapbox. 
and we'll come up with this empty V8. So this is a whole style that you can paste into the style section here instead of having this URL. That's just going to make a totally blank white map. So now when I load this, this should just be empty. So this is actually still a Mapbox map. It just has nothing on it because it's not loading any tiles. So we're going to use this as the most base example. So, you know, instead of doing this, you could specify a layer, you could specify where the tiles are coming from, all sorts of things. But we're just showing this for the sake of our example to get the fonts on there. So now in order to show some fonts, we need to be able to have a local reference to those fonts and we need to change them from being TTF file format to a different file format, okay? So um, luckily MapLibra has some really helpful tools here. So MapLibra fonts, if we go to this map libra font maker and of course the links will be in the description as usual uh, this will transform your fonts for you into the what's needed for the map box or the map libra slash map box format so here is our demo map we can drag in our ttf file so we'll do that with the same one we used before we hit convert all right now it's converted so we're going to download that and it's actually a somewhat large file compared to what it was with the ttf because it's a whole bunch of files so we'll open that up We'll extract it. I'm just doing that over on the side here. And you'll, I'll show you briefly what the files look like just so you can make sure that you have the right thing. Once we extract it, we get this huge list of PBFs. I'm not really 100% sure what exactly they mean. There's some kind of sign files. Uh, who cares? Uh, the important part is that's what we need. So now I'll copy this folder, this Ann Iron regular, and I'm going to drag it into this folder I've made in the directory that I'm working in called fonts. Okay, so there we go. Now inside there, we can see all those files. Now what we need to do is specify this glyphs to point to this folder. So all we actually need to do is remove the map box thing here because it's local. This will point locally by default and remove the map box. So now it'll say fonts and it'll look for the font name you give it. That's font stack. And it'll look for the range, which is all these different ones inside, depending on all sorts of things, probably zoom level and font size and all that kind of stuff. So now if we load our map, we should still just see a blank map with no errors. Okay, that's great. We're going to add a point and start styling. So we're going to say map.onload because we need to wait for the map to load. And then we, we're just going to add a simple GeoJSON point. So yeah. So here's our little GeoJSON. I just added a simple name called my point and a simple coordinate at zero, zero. It, you know, this could be whatever. And now we'll add that as a source. And now we'll add the layer for it. And it should be a symbol layer because that's the kind that has labels and text. Okay, so we've added this basic uh, layer. So for now, this won't show anything. So we need to also have layout and paint. So we're going to say text field. And we're going to make it get the name. Okay, so there we go. It's going to show my point. Now we do need to specify the font. So now we'll go to text font. And just so you're clear, you can find all this information in the layers section here where there's symbol layer and you'll see there's uh, text field text font and these are the two that we're going to use and it tells you what format they need to be in so that's what i'm referencing uh, when i'm just writing this stuff off the top of my head so now we need to put in to the text font the name of this folder that we called it so it's an iron regular okay so now with these two let's see if this loads Oh, I made a little error in my GeoJSON here. This should actually be type point. That's my bad, I used feature twice. Okay, so now we loaded it and you can see there's the point on there. So that's awesome. Now we have our own custom font. So if you wanted to use different custom fonts, you could reference them as dif different names here. And just to, just to finally show you how to actually add you know, the, the tile source behind what uh, this map would look like, I've come to this example at Map Libra adding a raster tile source, and you can see here they're using the same breakdown of the styles 
and we're going to just copy over all this stuff that they have here. We're going to replace our layers and sources with that. And I'm not going to bother cleaning this up because this is just an example. So then we reload and we can see our point is there on our totally custom map that has nothing to do with Mapbox. So that's a couple ways to add fonts, custom fonts to your Mapbox or Map Libra map. Uh, the second part where we add the layer and we specify the font can also apply the same idea can apply to a Mapbox map. All this stuff that we did with Map Libra can apply to Mapbox. But if you're not using Mapbox for its studio and sources and all that sort of thing, it probably makes sense for you to use Map Libra instead. So good luck with your uh, fonts and we'll see you in the next video.